Hey everybody, it's Emily at Arc Schooling, and welcome back to another episode of Homeschool Tidbits. Today is another kind of off-the-cuff Homeschool Tidbits. Um, I'm just wanting to do one more this month because I looked at my calendar and went, oh, <laughs> this is probably the last one we're going to do this month because next week it's Thanksgiving. So today's is going to be a recommendations video because I had been wanting to talk about read alouds for teens for a little while now because I've talked a lot about how reading aloud to our teenagers is still something that I believe is important to do. I think the best time to read aloud is when you have teenagers because I feel like you can have such great conversation that maybe you wouldn't be able to have with younger children. Also, you get to read some of your favorite books. Like, I feel like the teen years are a great time to introduce my favorite genres, my favorite books to my children. So for this video, I asked my children what have what were some of their favorite books that we read in their teen years? I specifically asked my twins, but also my youngest, because she's just now becoming a teenager. She's 14, so I'm going on 15. So I asked what were some of their memorable read-alouds. And I had a few in mind already, and I was pleased that our thoughts were kind of lining up, although they did mention a few that I hadn't thought of. So without further ado... I'm going to share the books that I feel made a big impact on my kids that we read in their teen years. So these are all books that we did read. Like, I'm not going to re recommend things today that I haven't actually done as a read-aloud, though there are many that I've read that we haven't done as read-alouds, but that I think would make great read-alouds. Maybe that's a different video. But these are the ones that we read together and I feel like made an impact. So I'm going to start with the book that I think everyone probably would expect me to include because it's my favorite book and that is The Book Thief by Marcus Zusak. This is a book I have read aloud to all of my children, all four of them. And it's a really important book to me and I feel like it has made an impact on all of them as well. It may not be their favorite book, but I feel like they all got something out of the reading experience. This is a story set in Nazi Germany during World War II, and we are being told a story from the perspective of death, and he's following a girl named Liesel Memminger, and her experience is during the war. This is such a good story, just, just a good story in itself, but it's also just so beautifully told. It's a really insightful story. Um, I think it's important that it gives us different viewpoints of what was happening during the war. This story lives in my heart forever and I cannot read it without crying. So all of my children have listened to me sob my way through the end of this book. And I think that's important too. Like uh, Books can be really moving experiences. Books can make you cry and I think it's important for our kids to see that. Next up is a book that I haven't read to all of my kids, just the twins, but I feel like we're probably gonna, I'm probably gonna read this aloud with Regina at some point, and I feel like this was a really interesting read aloud, and that is Unwind by Neil Schusterman. None of us have finished this series which is bumming me out. I really need to go back and, and finish it, except at this point, I'm going to have to start over because <laughs> I think I got to book three and I think there's either four or five. I'm not sure. But um, this this book in itself, I, I feel like stands alone as a really solid piece of dystopian literature. It's very disturbing, um, but it's so interesting. This is a story about what would happen if the United States had a second civil war that was fought over reproductive rights. And to end the war, a compromise was made. No, no one can have an abortion. Abortions are completely illegal. However, after the age of 12, so like between 13 and 17, you can opt to have your child unwound. And 
this is seen as acceptable because all of the parts are used, they're harvested for medical purposes, so technically your child isn't dead. They're just being harvested, which is so disturbing, but it's accepted as a compromise, and now, you know, teenagers everywhere are in danger, and we're following a few different teens in this story who are trying to escape their fate of being unwound. It is such a crazy story, but it's also done in such a way that, like, it rings true. And the conversations we had over this book were really, really interesting. The speculation about, like, what would this ever really happen? just the the conversations about reproductive rights and that sort of thing on its own. I, I think this is an important story. And I think Neil Schusterman was a little on the nose sometimes, but really, really well done. This next one is one Robbie, when I asked everybody for their recommendations for this video, Robbie said this book, which surprised me because it's not one that I've ever gone back to. And it's not what I remember well. But Robbie does, and that's Red Rising by Pierce Brown. I kind of want to go back now and reread this because I always meant to continue the series and didn't. And now I don't really remember much about this. Um, this is a beginning of a series. I believe it's a trilogy, although I want to say he's gone back and added more story. I don't know if th his second trilogy is completely separate from this, if it's set in the same world but not the same characters, or if it's a continuation. I'm not sure, because I've never looked into it, but I know there's more. Anyway, Bread Rising. This is a sci-fi story about a colony on Mars and the people who were sent there to, like, form the colony, to build it, mine it, make it habitable. And they're treated really poorly. And they're meant to believe that there's nothing above. Except above ground, all their hard work has gone into like creating this elite society. And so I believe the main character goes on a journey um, above ground and joins like a military school. I don't really remember it well, but Robbie does. I remember distinctly thinking that the writing style was really unique and interesting that the concept was really interesting. This was like this divided society between the haves and the have-nots and that sort of thing. Um, and it was really well done. I just never came back to it. And I kind of want to talk to Robbie when she's home on break and find out more about her thoughts on this. I read this aloud, like, I don't know, seven or eight years ago. So I don't, I don't really remember a lot about it. Besides it, now I want to read it again. The first book that Riley said did not surprise me because I was I was already thinking it. And that's Neil Schusterman's Ark of the Scythe series. Riley actually said Thunderhead, but I grabbed the first book. Um, because we didn't actually read this one aloud. The twins read this one on their own. And then we were all so excited about Thunderhead, we wanted to read it at the same time. So I read it aloud. And we also read aloud the toll. So I think... This is an excellent series to read together because there is so much to talk about. This is such a unique premise and I kind of feel that you should read Unwind first and then read Ark of the Scythe because there are some connections that I feel like Unwind was almost a prequel series. Like, it's never explicitly stated, but if you think on some of the things that happen in Ark of the Scythe, I think you can see that there is some remnants of Unwind in the story, in the background. Basically, in this world, we have overcome death. Humans are now immortal. And to keep the population under control, we have Scythes. Scythes are like government enlisted murderers, basically. They, their job is to kill people. But they are not allowed to just go nuts and be serial killers. They can't just kill for fun. They are killing to keep the population under control. So they have quotas that they have to meet. And there are certain like rules for their job. But overall, they, what they do is kill. And we're following two characters in this first book 
who are apprentices to a scythe. And so we're following them as they like study the art of killing and what it means to be a scythe. And it's so interesting to read about. Like, first of all, this world in which we are immortal and what does immortality do to humanity, but also the fact that everything is being run by the cloud. The cloud has become sentient and taken over. So there's no government, there's no leaders, there's no presidents or kings or any of that because it's no longer necessary. Humans are allowed to just be. Everyone has a basic income that they make just for existing and you can work if you choose to or you can choose not to. There's a whole like plot point about people who are unsavories. They're the people who want to rebel, who feel like they need to be othered, and how the Thunderhead has created a way for them to do that without harming themselves or anyone else. I find this whole book, this whole trilogy, to be just so incredibly interesting. There's a whole story involving like the formation of religion like how how do religions come to be and you see like how that happens over the course of all three books which is fascinating there i just there's there's so much here like i feel like this is neil schusterman's magnum opus i'm not sure he'll ever top it i think this is his peak work i think this is like one of the best trilogies i've ever read I cannot say more good things about it. You should read this with your teens. The other book Riley recommended I talk about is one that probably everyone's read at this point, but I'm going to talk about it because he did. And it made an impact on him, and that's the Hunger Games trilogy. I read this one aloud with both the twins and my youngest. We read this um, a year or so ago. I think she was 13 when we read this. And... I think this, again, is really quality literature to read aloud with teens because, again, so much to talk about with this series. This is like one of the first big popular dystopian trilogies that came out in the 2000s, and I think it's one of the best. I'm not sure that one can top what Suzanne Collins did with this. It's so unique on its own, even though I know there's a lot of comparisons you can make to Battle Royale and that sort of thing. For what it is on its own, I think it is still unique and stands on its own because she sort of drafted the concept of the the love triangle and the will she won't she and that sort of a thing. I feel like this is one of the few times it was done well, usually I think they're copying what she did here. Why I think this is great for reading aloud is that, again, there is so much interesting stuff to talk about. The way we approach entertainment, the, the things that we consider entertainment and have considered entertainment throughout history. You can talk a lot about gladiators in Rome and like how similar that was to what's happening in here. And you can talk about how we view violence in media and violence in general and how for example like it's seen as like this big no-no to have sex on television but if there's a lot of violence it's usually considered just fine to put on tv like sure why not you can have people murdering each other on tv but not if they're having sex so like i i find the way we approach entertainment in our society is reflected really well in here. Um, again, do I think it's entirely plausible? Not necessarily, but do I think that there's a big reflection on us as a society in here? Absolutely. I think Katniss is a really interesting character. I also think the way the series wraps up with Mockingjay, I know a lot of people don't like that book, but I think it does a really great job of showing the realities of PTSD and I think it it's so much more realistic to show that kind of trauma than to to have it wrap up in a happily ever after does it it is kind of a bittersweet ending it does sort of have a little element of happily ever after in the end but not really because I feel like it does such an excellent job of showing what trauma does to people 
and how they can find a way to overcome it. So, for that, I think this is a great series to read aloud. I'm, I nominated Project Hail Mary, because of course I did. I think this is excellent for reading aloud. However, I recommend the audio for this, not you reading it on your own, because I think if I were to try to read this on my own, it would not have gone over as well. But I think the audiobook is so good. Like, one of the best audiobooks I've ever listened to. This is what Andy Weir does best. We're following one man in space, figuring out why he's there. He can't remember how he got to where he is. There's a ton of flashbacks kind of like helping him remember what got him to this point and why he's in space and why he's alone. This story is great because, one, it's just a really good story. Like, on its own, it's just really interesting to listen to. Two, this is sci-fi at its best. I think one of my favorite things in science fiction are stories where we're working together, where we can show that, hey, sometimes aliens are great. Sometimes we can learn to work together with them and build a partnership. I think those are some of my favorite kinds of science fiction because I think it's important to show that it's not always going to be we're being invaded by evil aliens who want to kill us. I think sometimes we can have conversations about maybe there is life out there and maybe it wants to work with us. Maybe we can work together. Maybe we can build something good. And I think this does that really well. The other book Robbie mentioned, of course, is Watership Down by Richard Adams, which, I mean, this is one of my favorite books to read aloud of all time. I have now read this to all four of my kids, and all four of them have loved it. This is quintessentially a story about rabbits, except it's really about people. And I think this is just a beautiful hero's journey kind of a story. We're following these rabbits as they are building their own warren. They are leaving their home warren because of the danger that is found there and going off to build a new colony and the dangers they face along the way. And it's beautiful and haunting and it's a story that I will never stop thinking about. I can't even see a rabbit without immediately thinking of Watership Down. Um, I love that Richard Adams made these stories up to tell his children and they encouraged him to write them down. I love that he created a language, a mythology for rabbits and that it makes sense to rabbit behavior. I love the stories about El Herrera. I love the stories about Hazel and Fiverr and what they do, the big wig befriending Kihar. I just love this book so much. It's beautiful. It's literary fiction done well. It's a book that I think is for everyone. I, I cannot think of a single person I wouldn't recommend this to. And the last book I want to mention is one that maybe not everyone would think to do as a read aloud, but that we did, and I think it's great, and that is An Absolutely Remarkable Thing by Hank Green. We're big fans of the Green Brothers here. We love Crash Course. We love John Green. We love Hank Green and all of his stuff. Like, big fans of the Green Brothers. And so I don't really enjoy John's writing as much, but I was intrigued about Hank writing a book. So of course I bought it. And because my twins were also intrigued, we decided when it came out, we would read it together. And we loved this. Again, so much cool stuff to talk about. Hank has a lot of insights on social media, and that's essentially what this book is about is how social media affects us, how it affects society, um, the ways in which it could be used for good, and the ways in which it can be used for bad. And I think it's such an interesting way to build a conversation about that through April May and her adventures with this strange, mysterious robot that becomes known as Carl. is just a giant robot statue in New York City that... She's like, wow, that's weird. Must be an art piece. And come to find out that there's statues everywhere, all over the world at the same time. And everyone begins to have this, like, group dream 
where they can work together. And I, I don't know, it's a really weird synopsis, but it's a really well done story. And again, like I said, it's really about social media. So if you've ever wanted to have that conversation with your kids, but you want to have it in an interesting way, I recommend reading an absolutely remarkable thing with them. There is language in this, so be aware that there's some swearing. There is a little bit of talk about sex, but not a lot, and we kind of were able to graze through that. But I think the conversations we had about this book and the sequel, A Beautifully Foolish Endeavor, were absolutely worth the read. So, highly recommend that. So I hope that I gave you some ideas in this video for books that you might read with your teens, because this really is the best time to be reading aloud. I, I mean, the conversations alone, the deep discussions that we have are absolutely worth it. So I hope that you got something out of this video. Let me know down below in the comments what are some of your favorite books that either you have introduced to your teens or that you are excited to introduce to your teens. I'd love to hear about it. Thanks so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you in my next one. Happy reading. Bye!